Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noel Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit and joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Welcome everybody in the chat room. We're hanging out in the Adafruit Discord server. If anybody wants to say hello, ask any questions, um, share any projects, we're there in the, uh, in the Discord chat room. So we'll be checking in periodically to say uh, what's up and to answer any questions. We got some housekeeping to do. We're going to start off the show as we normally do with paying some bills. Coupon code this week, folks, is IOFEEDS. So if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, you can use coupon code IOFEEDS in checkout and you will get 10% uh, off everything in the shop except for gift certificates and um, subscriptions to the AdaBox. That's correct. Speaking of AdaBox. Yeah, I have the website launched here. AdaBox, we are shipping in about 25 days and some hours. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. It's a great way to get uh, all the Adafruit goodies um, quarterly, I believe. Yeah, something yes. like that. All right, so check it out. There's a nice account down there. And um, it's going to be sooner than later. <laughs> Let's see what else. We have some freebie deals going on. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the different tiers of products for orders that are $99 or more. You'll get a free Perma Proto, the half-size breadboard. For orders that are $200 or more, you get the Perma Proto plus UPS ground shipping for the continental US only. And then for orders that are $299, you get the Perma Proto, you get the free shipping and a free Circuit Playground Express. Um, so that's great. These get automatically added to your your cart as you're checking out so you don't have to kind of remember to do that. We have a nice system set up for you. So check it out, adafruit.com slash free. We also want to walk through some help wanted. The Adafruit jobs board is, 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 um, is up there so you can check it out at jobs.adafruit.com. You can see all the different um, available um, listings. If you are an employer looking to get some help on your project, um, you can uh, create a job listing. It's free to do so. Um, there's no spam. Lamar and Phil personally approve and check all of the uh, submissions. Also, if you are a maker and uh, you are looking for some extra gigs, you can uh, create a profile, throw up your resume up there, and uh, it's free to do so as well. So uh, you, can, you can do that. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of job listings, so check them out if you are interested. Um, some of them are from work from home, which is really useful right now. So check that out. Okay, what else? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. We got the... All right, I guess shipping. There are some options for folks in uh, the New York City area. Uh, you can do same-day delivery, which is, which is really nice. So if you want same-day delivery um, and you are in New York City, uh, that is one of the options in the shippings. All right, and let's do some new newsletters real quick. Um, once a week, Adafruit has a newsletter that's focused on products that are um, released and new. You can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter and subscribe to that. We also have some daily newsletters. Are they daily? Yeah, something like that. Um, adafruitdaily.com. 
Uh, that's where you can subscribe to the individual categories. We have um, MakeCode, um, Python on hardware, 3D printing. Make, make a your business. business. There's a bunch there. If you head over to the website, adafruitdaily.com, you can see all the different uh, categories. I just went there. You can see here, it's a pretty simple site. You just throw your email in there. We super pinky promise never to spam anybody. This, uh, this actually is not tied to your Adafruit account. So if you do have an Adafruit account, we don't automatically There's no way to connect you. to the two. Yeah, there's no way to connect. Go ahead and check out the brand new newsletter that just came out, I on NPI, which is a look at all the new chips coming out and a nice little exclamation from Lamar Lady Ada herself. So definitely yeah. keep an eye out on that The newsletter. text version, because they're also doing the video version of that. Exactly. sort of a segment on Ask Engineer. It's a new segment. All right, See let's ya. check in real quick. Go Wait. ahead and give shout outs to everybody in the chat rooms over on the YouTube chat. Hello, Connor and Kathy over on Facebook, Twitch, and of course, our personal favorite, Discord. Everybody up in there. Madball, Mr. Certainly hanging Hello. out. Good morning to Good everybody morning, joining us. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's pretty cool project. Sure. <laughs> Should I do the learn guide or, or do you want to fetch the sensor from outside? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me grab that. <laughs> okay, so this week's sort of uh, task project was to create an Adafruit IO video overview. Um, so with that, we had to kind of re-familiar ourselves with Adafruit IO. It's a great way to kind of plot sensor data uh, to a dashboard that you can customize and create. Um, it's free to do so. Um, there are um, lots of different features that you can have when you go Adafruit IO Plus, but for the free stuff, you can start plotting data um, right away. So this is our little project here. Here it is. The, the main brains of it is the ESP8266. This is the Huzzah um, feather. So it has built-in LiPo charging, and I'm actually I'm powering it off this, at, what is it, a 2,000 milliamp LiPo battery. So that's really nice. I'm using the, uh, the doubler proto wing um, so that I can actually take out the ESP feather if I need to. And it's running three different sensors right now. So let's kind of walk through them. This is a gas sensor. So this is a great way to kind of get the air quality. Uh, this is the uh, temperature, humidity, and pressure, the BME280 uh, sensor. And then this one is the VEML6070 sensor. And this one uh, takes readings of ultraviolet rays. So it's great for kind of tracking um, how, um, how bright it is. Not how bright it is, but how many ultraviolets are out there. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, I just have them soldered here into all the little pins. And then uh, I have all the wires in the back there. So I think this is a really good entry um, to kind of get familiar with Adafruit IO because you can pull lots of different data. So this is the hardware aspect of it. It's portable. I could set this outside. As long as I have a strong Wi-Fi connection, it'll be uh, publishing uh, all that sensor data uh, to my custom dashboard. So uh, the Learn Guide will walk you through setting up um, your dashboard. Here's my dashboard that I set up. Um, this is actual real data, real, uh, real values that are being pulled from outside. Just and a couple inside. Yeah. Ago. So here you can see I have some awesome text and some really nice icons. Um, here's the temperature at 78 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you can add that if you'd like. We have the humidity, the pressure, altitude. We're below sea level, I think. <laughs> uh, ultraviolet, we're in the indoors right now, so it's set to zero. We have some carbon, uh, some CO2, um, and then some uh, TVOC. I forgot the name. Total Voltaic Organic, organic compound. compound. Yeah. And we also have this right here, which is uh, a line chart that is plotting the data so I can see um, the temperature and the humidity change over time. What's really cool is that this dashboard uh, has some really neat editing tools. So I just hit the little edit button. Am I still? Yep. And so if I want to kind of update this, let's say I want to uh, see the data from the last one hour, I can see that and hit, uh, and you can see it automatically updates. And uh, you could also change uh, what uh, data you want to pull. Right now I'm pulling from humidity and temperature, but I could also pull from, let's say, uh, CO2 and the TVOC. But I'm going to leave it at uh, humidity and temperature for now. 
and uh, just hit update block, and then uh, that's, that's that. And you can completely customize this. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can do that as well. You have full that's control so cool right there. over this. Yeah. yeah, you know, you want to be a little bit careful where you're dragging and dropping. It's a little bit like, um, I guess, like iOS, how you're kind of dragging different icons around. But yeah, you can stretch this out, and, it's, and so it cool. seems to be pretty responsive. I'll hit save, and, um, and that's you know, your chart, your line chart now kind of in a different UI or a different layout, different size. So that's really neat. Um, so here I'm seeing that the, uh, when we stepped outside or when we brought it inside, the temperature changed drastically, right? Outside it's about 78, and inside here it's 80. the humidity. Yeah, it's okay. 80 inside now. The humidity is a little bit less in here, right? So you're looking at 30, and then uh, that's 50 up there. And um, I think I have it plotting every, oh boy, I forget, like every minute or so. But you can change that if you'd like. Um, yeah, so lots of customization options. And um, wow, I just ruined my whole layout. <laughs> That's funny. It's because of the way I had it set up. But uh, you can come in here and have fun and kind of organize it how you want. Yeah, this, this one has a lot of uh, data points, so that's why the UI can get a little bit funny. That's funny. I never get tired of seeing that UI stretch and move around yeah, and like rubber band fun. around each other. It's so yeah. cool. Um, that's funny how I messed up my layout. But as you can see, I can quickly come in here and just like you know, drag and drop. I really like the way um, when you're dragging an element, you get this little kind of darker um, not, it's not dark because the background's dark, but like it's kind of a dark gray to let you know where uh, the spot is for your widget to land, or your block, rather. Um, and you can have icons tied to, uh, to your, your data, your, your text elements, but uh, I have it set up this way so that I can get a bigger look at the icon. So um, it just has a nicer look, I think, doing it this way. Um, so if you wanted to add another thing, you could add um, switches, sliders, gauges, all of this stuff here, um, or a stream of data. If you want to just see like your raw data, images, a remote control, which is great, and like a number pad, which is great. And so if you're trying to control a project, um, you can do that. We can actually do that right now. Would you like to grab the IO um, mailbox that we have? It's just another demo to show you uh, kind of remotely controlling. Um, your project. So if you don't want to, if you don't have a sensor and you're not, you're not pulling data and you're not logging data, you can still control your projects through Adafruit IO using any of those um, uh, any of those blocks. So yeah, you can you could also have a battery powered, but yeah. So uh, yep, it's powering on. So what I'll do is let's head over to I think this one. Yeah, this one. And we'll just readjust this right here, so you can see. Going to tunnel view. Whoa. Yeah, kind of a tunnel view. How should we do this? Like That's this. fine. Oh no, you had a good. I think this is okay too. Oh, just so you're, you're not, not seeing the tunnel view, huh? All right, so there we go. So I have my um, this one. This so this is an enclosure. It's a little mailbox, and it, it has the uh, just a, a micro servo and the ESP32 or the ESP8266, the Huzzah version. Uh, you could also have a battery in there. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to my dashboard. Let me go and pull up my different dashboard. This one's called Lamp Control. Uh, or I think I got rid of it. That's funny. So what I'll do is I guess I'll have to edit it. So I'll hit Edit. <laughs> and then um, I'll create a new block. Uh, I want a slider. And I need, this, I need to say what feed am I pulling from. Uh, I have one called Servo. So that's a feed that I created. It's really easy to do, so you just click a feed. And then uh, my maximum value, I, I want it to be uh, 180 degrees. And my minimum value will be zero, OK? So I'll hit Create Block. All right, so there is my thing. I could Let me go back in there and um, actually name it. I'll call it Servo Control, like that. So you can add that nice um, thing there. You could also play with the test values if you want to just see some values in there. And right now, um, I'll hit Save. And let's see if I can. Change this. Maybe it'll work. Maybe not. I think it's already at 120, so I'll set it. To, there you go. So um, now I have to switch the camera. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. 
I wonder if I could use this layout to kind of get an idea. Yeah, it's using the wrong uh, camera. Well, you could, you could hear it. <laughs> this wasn't too planned, but uh, let me go back to one, uh, I think 120 is a good, Ooh. okay. And you see, it's really hard to hear. Hmm. Here's what I'll do. I will just go into this and set the camera for this guy and change that to uh, the second camera. Go. Okay, so now we can actually do it. Now I can actually uh, show you guys this working at the same time. So I'll set this down to 30. If I go with zero, I think it goes like way down there. And that's just a bit of the design, like, you know, you have full control. And it's going that's pretty so cool. quick. And remember, this is going over the internet, right. into space. <laughs> into space, yeah. And um, so if you have a project where you want to control something, like let's say a door lock or a water pump, anything like that, or you want to turn off something, like a, what would you call it, a relay, mm -hmm. you want to turn something off that's, you know, that's tied to the mains, uh, you can do so. So that is really simple to set up as well. As you saw me, I created the thing and my feed was already set up, but uh, creating the feed is pretty simple. You go to your feeds, view all, and then uh, here's all the different feeds that you can create. There's not much required to create a feed other than just naming it. <laughs> um, and then in the actual Arduino code or CircuitPython code, um, that's where you do, um, it's where you call the key, the name of the feed, and that's how you're able to populate data into that. Um, so yeah, it's very, very neat. So let me go over here. So just to see the T's, one of the upcoming uh, projects that is in our list for sometimes this year is actually having a universal uh, little adapter that can attach to say a older thermostat or a lock on a door. It was actually a Kickstarter that uh, Lamar and Phil saw where you're able to do this exact thing where it's just a servo that is able to be adapted to an old analog type yes. device and it can either turn the light on or turn a dial so you can simply have an old style retro type thing being controlled through uh, IRT, the Adafruit IoT service. You got it. Yeah. I was seeing if I could make this on off work, but I think it's just on and off. Mm -hmm. I'd have to set that up in the code, but uh, gotcha. pretty simple. Yeah, I was doing like a little demo, but uh, this is it. This is my mailbox control. I think I can make it really Internet big. Internet controlled servo right. is what I like to think of it as. Yeah. And so it's basically what it is. Should have had it from this angle too, so you could see oh, that's fun. Nimbus, the friendly cloud entity on the back there. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a lot of fun. <laughs> and if you're wondering on how to build this awesome little project, we actually have a whole learn guide on this. Yes, which I, will I will post pull it up. in the comments. This is the Gmail IoT, I believe. So this will give you a notification on any type of triggers you want. One of the things that Brent was using it for was for GitHub uh, requests or any of those notifications for that. Yeah, you know, this used to work with if this then that, but they changed their right, API. Yeah. So we help, so we have a a setup on using Zapier, which is a service very similar to if this then that that can create um, triggers. So let's say when you get a new email, you can say I want um, I want the servo to go up, which is really fun. <laughs> uh, so you can set that up there. If this then that again, they change their API. Um, yeah, Google changed something, I guess, and uh, Zapier has it, but this is still here for legacy purposes. Um, so this learn guide walks through 3D printing, wiring it, and then setting up Adafruit IO. So it's very thorough and it still works just with a different service, Zapier. So here's like a little assembly of it. Not too bad, not too shabby. So that's just one of the many uh, different uh, Adafruit IO projects. Um, one of our favorite recent ones is the plant monitoring project. Yeah, let me pull up the servo. Yeah, this is uh, um, Adafruit IO Basics. So this is the uh, demo uh, that we just did. But it's just, you know, we put it in the, the mailbox. I didn't want to have to keep creating new emails and sending it to test this demo to show you controlling a servo over AIO. Uh, so this is what I actually am using this code here, um, which is also a part of the uh, Arduino library for Adafruit I.O. So if we go to the Arduino setup, 
um, you can see here all the light. You can see that uh, the example is built in to the Arduino library. It's number 16 called Servo. And there's a bunch of them. So humidity and temp, NeoPixels, RGB strips, uh, grouping uh, sub subscriptions and other stuff, creating a dashboard, using analog in and out, digital in and out, type conversions, locations. Every one of these examples really shows um, a decent basics demo on setting up uh, different types of projects. Um, so that's the one that we're showing is the uh, the servo one. And this one's you know nice too. It shows like a piece of paper with a little paper arrow just to mm -hmm. show you an idea of you know you don't need 3D printing and stuff. Uh, and we also have uh, versions for Python. Um, this is uh, using the Raspberry Pi. So you have a Raspberry Pi laying around and you want to do some IoT stuff with it. Um, we have uh, some nice um, stuff for you. Yeah, nice wiring and all that too, using the cobbler. Sweet. Um, let's talk about the stand that we're using for the, uh, this little yeah, environmental, sure. stand, uh, environmental sensor here. Yeah, this is a stand that uh, we created different designs for it, one for the, uh, the doubler wing and one for proto wing. So if you have any of those and you're prototyping something, this stand will help you out. You just need some standoffs um, that we actually carry in the shop. These are the M25 standoffs uh, with the hardware. Um, and yeah, they're designed uh, to kind of sit upright like that. And there's plenty of room um, in the back there for your wiring, for headers, and you can even add your battery there if you'd like. So. We have that there. I just actually uploaded the source files to Thingiverse because um, I noticed that that wasn't up there. And if you need to use the triple doubler, we also have one for that the as well. Triple doubler, yeah. The triple, yeah, triple wing. Yeah, this is a great one too. Um, that way you have all this, all the things. So you got your feather, you got your uh, what is that? The RTC, and then you can have an Let's OLED see. display or maybe you have another set of sensors or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And these are great. I mean, you can, there's so many ground voltage pins and extra pins. So there's lots of prototyping area there to create a custom circuit that is compatible with all the feather wings and feather boards. Especially if you can't stack them. Yeah, this is a that's another Perfect way to have them all nicely laid out if you need to be able to look at them visually. This is a great little stand that could be edited for that. You have some user parameters, I believe, on there. And then yep. some nice little rubber feet on the bottom here. If you need to have some button pushes, they're not going to slide around your desk. So you can definitely pick some of those up as well. Yep. So uh, doubler wings, tripler wings, there are, I think they're in stock. And uh, if you want the source files for the actual PCB file, uh, I have STEP and Fusion 360 files for those as well. They're down here. They're also in our GitHub repository for all their 3D printed parts. Um, yeah. Looks like folks have already started downloading them. <laughs> nice. Yay. So there you go. Uh, yeah. I was glad I had this printed already because I didn't have to like make one for this project and just quickly get it and swap out the boards. And it's really nice to use the, uh, the, the, the header kits, like using a, a female headers so that you can actually pop them out of the sockets and reuse them and whatnot. So it's always nice. It's very modular. Yeah, prints without any supports as well. So that's pretty nice. So those are putting all the links and all of the chats here. Let's uh, put the mailbox down, shall we? There it is. I have to switch to this one. Interesting, because I have to like share the whole monitor. So dashboards, mailbox control. It's still visible. <laughs> there you go. Now it's down. All right. And Random. Nom nom. Now I'm hungry. It's suggesting it'd be really good to, for a 3D printer control. Say if there's something that's supported by Octoprint, either turn the printer on or off, yes, or so when you open a box, you can feed it prints. Yeah. That or is maybe one knock of the... a print off of the bed. That's a nice, right. really good idea that's for that. That's so cool. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And then w, uh, G W Wang. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, and he's well, commenting can, that Arduino is not suitable for a formal product. <laughs> oh. What is it? Some shots fired at Arduino there from Why? GW Wang. <laughs> well, the thing about um, Adafruit IO, we have uh, client libraries for Arduino, CircuitPython, and Python for the Raspberry, Raspberry Pi. Pi yeah. So that's really, that's really uh, 
what we, we try want. to be want, as inclusive with everything, as we yeah. can. So in the overview guide uh, over here, oh, I think I changed it. Yeah, so just welcome to AIO. Which uh, where you want to start? That was supposed to be this week's video. Uh, Brent and the IO team are reviewing it to make sure that we have all correct. of the info correct in there, so that should yeah. be released sometime. And, and we have a video today. here, but it, it's it's more. It was a couple of years ago, yeah. and it, uh, it it's mostly graphics showing you a little bit of the UI and stuff. Uh, the, the, our point with the video was to show you real projects and actual data that's running, and just kind of walk through all the features. So that's what our video is. Um, so it's cooking still. But I was saying, um, when you're getting started with AIO, um, you can you have the option whether you want the Arduino library or the CircuitPython library. Oh, some live uh, live comments on here from uh, from uh, Brent. He saw the video. He's letting the rest of the IT team look at it, make sure it's good to go. Sweet. So that should be out hopefully sometime this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. The, thanks, Brent. Yeah, the the whole point is to. We can, we can add lots of words to it, but making it nice and concise is definitely yeah. our goal. It's like, how do you say this in the simplest way without so many words? <laughs> how do I say this in English? <laughs> and then without Connor, marketing speak. It's, it's kind of difficult, actually, to make it anything is. that's yeah. like a script thing, and you're reading a script. It's kind of hard to speak English. Mm -hmm. Connor on the YouTube chat is saying, this might be a good to click on a floodlight at a printer, or even turning on Raspberry Pi, so you can completely remote yes. into the printer so itself. Great ideas, guys. Keep them coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, we're in the process of uh, moving, and I think we'll have lots of um, home automation opportunities now in our new in our new area that we're moving to. Yes, we'll talk more about that <laughs> later. So, if you want to pick up any of the uh, you know Wi-Fi capable boards, definitely use coupon code IO feeds uh -huh. and try it out. This is really. Um, rekindling my interest in IoT connected products. Mm, definitely makes projects. it simple. And there's a ton of work that went behind the scenes to making it nice and simple. So programmer, non-programmers like us were yeah, able to go in there great point, and drive uh, all that around. So definitely support all these efforts or just use the free service yeah. that is available as well and give feedback. That's also a nice way to contribute back. Any bugs that are found or any GitHub pushes that you do help a ton to continue this effort. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Um, I had a point, but I think you covered it. Go ahead and jump into this week's What Are We Prototyping? Continuing on with yeah. the very are awesome we, are project. Are we done here with this? I believe so. I'll you have so. it right there. Yeah. I'll just clear the space yeah, we're here. We're already 30 minutes in. Wow. There's a lot to cover with this. There is. OK. Oh, um. Connor is saying that he just read what he typed. <laughs> I was able to make sense of it, but he needs more coffee. Yes. Right. Cheers. Okay. Um, I am in the progress of documenting our MIDI guitar. So if we look at this, I guess it's going to be a little bit big, but uh, I have the, the yeah I have the parts printed out here, and I have the guitar body assembled. So I am walking through, documenting how to assemble this guy. It's several pieces that are. Um, kind of screwed and fastened Snapped together, in. but the main body piece is um, is a snap fit design, which I'm very happy with. That's so cool. So if you haven't seen this project yet, this is a guitar that's very similar to the Guitar Hero controller. And uh, of course this it is has to be in Lady Ada pink. Yeah, but it's also dark gray too, like the glitter gray. Yeah. So uh, these pieces snap fit together. This is where um, you can take it apart. The, you can see here that uh, it really is designed for printers that have a pretty kind of a standard bed. I mean, there's not a standard bed, but I may mostly design this to fit on the Prusa i3. The Ultimakers, um, the, the, yeah, the Enders. Um, so hopefully this is going to fit on on everybody's printer that wants to print it. So these uh, these pieces here that make the body, um, they are fastened together with these screws and these tabs here. Um, they have the mounting holes in them, and these uh, all have the snap fit uh, geometry here for uh, uh, grasping onto this. And then this side here is uh, where this is the top half of the, the guitar body and this is where uh, the neck is uh, attached it gets attached with uh, more screws and hex nuts and then um, inside the neck is where the cherry mx keys are going to be 
and uh, there's also a spot here for a feather and a slide switch so that we can have these, uh, this bot, the, uh, nice NeoPixel diffuser in here. Um, so you can snap them together like that. And that all clamps nice together and stays like that. So it's easy access to it. It's running off. It's the main board that it's running off of uh, is the Grand Central M4. It's running Circuit Python. And there we go. Now it's all, all the snaps are, are in place. And uh, there's spots here for uh, two potentiometers, a custom whammy bar that, that, that does pitch bending. And uh, it also has uh, an accelerometer, the LIS3DH, it's mounted here so that you can do some, uh, some modulation effects. Uh, and then two switches here for uh, changing up the different modes, and then a eight-way selector for changing up the different octaves or sets of chords. So this is uh, the second build that we're doing. This is the documentation version of it. The real one, we've had it built, and we've been uh, testing uh, code. And this is a collaboration project with Liz uh, Blitz CD DIY, and it really wouldn't happen without Liz. Um, so right now what I'm testing is the strum, I think. Yeah, I'm testing out the strum mode. So the strum mode, uh, let's kind of zoom in on this bit here. So this is a, uh, there's two switches here, and you can hear the switches happening. So with a real guitar, in order to kind of, or really the Guitar Hero controller, in order to kind of get sound out of there, you have to hold uh, your keys down and then strum. So it's a little bit difficult to play that right there, like the way it's laid out here, but that's what strumming does. Like you're not gonna uh, hear it unless you actually hit one of the notes. So very much similar to a guitar. And then you do have those two switches so you can kind of strum up and down. You can do that. Um, so um, Yep, I'm in the process of, of documenting it and just playing it as much as I can so I can get an idea of, uh, I get a better handling of playing it. And the wave bar is so fun to play, excuse me, so fun to play with. Um, oh yeah, let me turn this on. Um, yeah, so this is a black LED acrylic. <laughs> There's a lot to the project. Um, that black LED acrylic that you've seen us use in that, uh, that Valentine's Day project, I'm using it here. It really works well. So I have a NeoPixel strip that's inside there. This little cover here snap fits. And I milled this on our other, other mill uh, piece of V, and it's just running um, uh, the rainbow uh, demo code. So that looks really cool. I just think it's a really cool looking neck, or uh, head, rather. And yeah, so strumming, testing it. And if you want to do kind of like arpeggios, these, these switches allow you to turn strumming mode on and off. So right now I just turned off strumming mode, so this won't do anything. Um, but the, it lets you trigger these guys. So you can do arpeggios, right? Wow. Really cool. Um, so you have the ability to change these if you want, these two potentiometers. Um, right now we have it set up to modulation and, ex and uh, velocity. So with velocity, you can kind of switch between them. And it's so fun to play the whammy bar because it Throwing a little bit of pitch bend into your, 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 whatever chord you're playing is always fun. <laughs> ah, Pedro, hit the whammy. Wham it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, guys. Um, this is a super passion project too. This wouldn't be possible again without Liz. Mm, um, lots of cool her knowledge. That went yeah, in. her knowledge and uh, Guitar Hero really set this up because I was just going to make another version of our first one that we made in 2013. Mm -hmm. It was basically like, hey, let's make a MIDI fighter, 
put some arcade buttons in it, but have it in the format of a guitar. And having um, the whammy bar is something I had no idea how to do. Um, so Liz like tore down her Guitar Hero, one of her many Guitar Hero <laughs> controllers, and took pictures of it. And I was able to kind of reverse engineer the geometry so that we can make it printable, because that's the goal here. A lot of this does not require support yeah. material. And um, yeah, I think it's a really fun uh, little mini controller. Yeah, those Guitar Hero guitars were not sacrificed were not sacrificed in vain <laughs> right well it still works i mean we didn't have to break it oh i didn't even demo the the different uh, sets of chords that you can have so as you're changing your octave because this is an eight-way selector switch um you can have up to eight different octaves or eight different sets of chords that, sets of notes that you can use to kind of play chords And uh, I also forgot to kind of demo the accelerometer as well, so... Wait, I think I might have... I might have to double check my wiring. Oh. That's odd. I'll have, to, I'll have to double check it, but yeah, the accelerometer is really fun to play with too, so you don't have to uh, mess with the mod wheel here, the potentiometer, you can just go like this. You did drop it earlier today. Yeah, <laughs> I did drop it, but it's a testament, hey, all the buttons are still working. Yeah. That's not even how you're supposed to hold it. <laughs> Can we just end the show now? Like just <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's too much it's fun. It's too fun. It's yeah. too good. It's what I've been posting in there. Everybody likes it. God, Lee. I'm glad you do because, again, it's a passion project. Uh, it's, yep. Lots of awesome upgrades. Lots of really good code, too, that could be used on any other type yeah, of... Yeah, it's all Circuit Python. We have a great MIDI library. And, man, huge shout out to Liz for, mm -hmm. uh, for helping me put this together. Yeah. It wouldn't happen otherwise, again. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's community makes. Uh, sure. That will be released next week, I believe. Yeah, yeah. This so the documentation is already. Intense. Yes. There's so many wires. <laughs> oh boy. But but be on the lookout for it. If anyone would like to test it now, I can send you the files because yeah. they're pretty much in their final stages of printing. Mm -hmm. So uh, go ahead and ask me. And, um, and then the code whatever. is available on GitHub, I believe. Is it already public? Not yet. Okay. It will be soon. Um, as, as I said, we're still working through post. strumming. There's like a little bug here and there, but ah, gotcha. it's pretty solid. I will saw. post the CAD file links to where a lot of these are updated or uploaded right before the guides are gone live. Sure. I put the CAD link on there as well as the, uh, the GitHub where a lot of the code for all of the learn guide code also goes. Yeah. It also goes up there before the guides are released. That's correct. Because we got to lint them and get them approved before yeah. launching our guide. Nice. So much fun. Ah, oh, MIDI good. guitar. I've been seeing a lot of guitar builds too, like this really? past couple of weeks. Like huh. I saw Bob from Make, uh, I Like to Make Stuff created a, a B bender, which is really mm. cool for Rob Scallon. Um, just a bunch of different guitar, like Instagram promotion things, and it's like, oh, this is so cool. It's like everybody's making guitars right now. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Um, don't forget, coupon code is IO feeds if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop. Maybe a Grand Central or maybe a Feather. Just required for this pixels. build. Yeah. I um, believe can, they are in stock. Yeah. I can't find the GitHub. For which one? for all of the files, not the 3D parts. Oh, the, the learn code. guides? Yeah. I think you could just go to GitHub and oh, just type uh, in, just go to GitHub itself and then say like learn system. It's the fritzing parts. There it is. Which one? Three down where it says Lego. One more up, that one, that, one, that one's ah. it, yeah. And for anybody feeling brave or adventurous, yeah, you can see where all the all posts are being uploaded. I think John just did a commit for his um, for his guy that it's going up. Uh, I Ooh, think Thursday. Thursday. Nice, sweet. So we got that. IO feeds. It's coupon code. 
Pedro's gonna get those links for you. They are both up there. Then I'll get my uh, browser loaded with this week's Community Makes Time Lapse Tuesday. Yesterday was Tuesday, and every Tuesday we try to have a 3D printed project from the community. This week it's a Pokemon style themed project. Easter egg. It's an Easter egg. It's shaped like a Pokeball. Has anybody done this before? This is I think really it's fun. A really good this idea. Is such a great idea. We saw them. We're like, okay, we got to make this. Yeah. Because uh, I guess Easter is, is coming. That and I had no idea that it actually matched with. There was a new Pokemon game release as I well. I think so. You were telling was me. Is that released or something? I, I, I thought Announced that's what you said. Something? I think that's what I said. <laughs> this so, is really cool. It's a multi part design, so they all snap fit together. Did you need any glue or anything to assemble? No, it, it no, all snaps just, fits. The you got these really nice hinges. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, it snaps fits, and all the different colors are printed separately, so you don't have to do any painting on it. You don't have to have a dual extruder on it. Okay, and we can fit an Adabot, or as the poster shows, a, oh, I forget, Kinder Egg. Kinder Egg? Yeah, one of those Those are candies. chocolate eggs. They're yeah. filled with cream and stuff. You jump over to the overhead. Probably this one, yeah. there we go. And yeah, you can see, great. well, Adabot fits in there. You can see the little hinge mechanism just snap fits on there, like that. The little red part just snaps right into the black. A little ring around it, and the black ring snaps into the little right, the white bottom of the egg there. Super That's a little design. push button here that actually releases the little snap fit thing the in latch. here. The little latch that goes in there. You can see the way that that is working. Just pushes on there to push this out of the way. It snaps in like that. That's so cool. And it looks so cool. It's an egg. It's yeah. a Pokeball. It's an eggy Pokeball. I did have a little bit of def deform deformation from the heat, I guess, from the nozzle. Okay. Um, should have mm. tried printing it on the... Uh, Was it too slow? The, the I think it's speed? just the, the blower on there that uh, mm, I, I, I need to saying, put yeah. back on there to okay. make it cool a little bit more. Yeah. And then there's just a little bit of... Um, little blemishes from yeah. the retractions going on that happen for the time lapse purposes. Gotcha. And but other than that, it's a very nice print. Uh, pretty easy to do. I have the times and all the specs for how long everything took and the size. It should fit on uh, most printers, even like the smallest ones. Yeah. The complete size when everything is all said and done together, it's about 100 millimeters tall. Uh, it's about like half of that when you're printing each different piece. So it should fit on a small printer. Sweet. Excellent. Little design there. Great little storage. You can storage. see yeah, the, the design uh, here. It's super bestie. Beastie. Beastie? Yep. Shout out Super Beastie on Thingiverse for posting it. Also posted it on, I believe, Colts 3D. Yeah. But you can check it out. Um, printed it uh, all in separate pieces. A little bit of support with material required, as you saw, but they're the bottom, all here. Yeah. Oriented, ready to print. Here's a little quick video that he has. It looks really, really good on his end. If you play um, it there, you can see the push button action on the way that it releases the latch. Super cool. Yeah, and you can great. see the kinder egg there that he was uh, hiding inside there yeah, for Easter. Too. Very cool. Yeah. I really like this design. Yeah, Taking existing of... things and theming it out to a holiday. It's really cool. Yeah, super cool. We should post it on, we should tag him on Instagram. Super beastie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Printed it on an Anycubic, all metal mega, with some wraps and with some supports. Nice. But uh, yeah, your miles are vary depending on if you want a uh, wrap or not. Mm hmm. Sweet. Check it out. Very fun. Got a couple more community Very makes. Festive. That's right, just one more. Really um, cool. Star Trek Communicator remake. Hey, this is great. Yeah, so uh, Leonard McFacepunch <laughs> on Thingiverse posted his make or her make of the Star Trek Communicator. This is a real. Um, this is a real this working is a real communicator. cell phone. Yeah. It's a real working cell phone. It uses the Adafruit Phona. Correct. Which uh, has a, what is it, GSM? Mm -hmm. Like you a, have G, a uh, 2G yep. network? So you have a slim SIM card slot in there, so you can yeah. attach that and set up a phone number. One of our uh, providers is Ting. We also, I think, I believe we still sell the SIM card in the store. Yeah. You can so, put one of those up to get some cell phone service. This is actually a, a, an, an, an hmm, what would you call it? You said it was a dip switch. Didn't yeah, it? so this is a, so Leonard yeah, added a dip switch so that you can have up to ten speed dials or how many nice. you want if you want to memorize the switch positions. Um, remade the power tune to, uh, to to sound like the original series French horn. Oh, so again, wow. there's sound effects that are going on. Yes. Um, added the next generation song as the incoming ringtone. Whoa. Okay. This is like. 
not not just so like cool. adding on to the physical design, but also adding some extra code, which is great. Wasn't able to get the scan function to stop on FM stations, so I added a user scanning. Activate ah. the dip switch setting using the call hang up to increment the FM radio by one or two gigahertz. I mean one or point one gigahertz. Activate uh, di uh, activate the dip and decrement FM by one or point. Okay, that's a lot. They're very cool. Um, making it for a friend. Because it's not too cool to have just one for myself. So that's great. You made ah, two. How I didn't cool. Even that. Yeah, there's two of them. Very awesome. That is so cool. And um, that's great. That is super great. So shout out to Leonard McFace Punch <laughs> for posting this up. And actually adding to it, like adding that dip switch is really, really, really clever and good idea as well. Hmm. Posting links well, to this. Um, yeah, this is great. So uh, yeah, you can check it out. Um, the, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the learn guide for this is a, is, is, is a real learn guide. You can check it out. There's Pedro dressed up like evil Spock. <laughs> I forgot you did that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a great, great remix. So shout out to Leonard, Leonard for posting that. That's this week's Community Makes. If you guys have any makes that you'd like to share, you can share it in all of the different social places, whether it's Discord, Twitter, or Instagram. Um, you can tag us in it, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully see it. Our Twitter handles are up here in their little purple header there. Um, I'm at Ekin and Pedro is at VideoPixel, or you can just at Adafruit so the whole team, the whole social media team can see it as well. So we appreciate you guys when you tag us in that. Let's see, what's Community Makes? Um, yeah, we're getting. We're I think that's going to be it that's for gonna be this it for the show. show. Yeah. yeah. We had a nice little update on some models here, but we'll save that for next week. Oh, that's right, yeah. At least we have something for next week. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, because we are in the midst of moving, so yeah. we gotta, yeah. All right, well, later tonight is the two shows. Show and Tell yep. is, um, it happens every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We had a time change here in the United States, so uh, I think it'll be one hour ahead if you are outside of the States. Uh, so just check in with your Google or wherever you like to see where, um, <clears throat> what the time zone is here in, uh, in the Eastern part of the United States. So that's happening tonight at 7.30 p.m. We invite you to come on and share your projects. All participants get a free as seen on Show and Tell sticker. Um, and uh, it's just a great place to kind of share um, projects. It's Lamar and Phil's favorite half hour of mm -hmm. the day of the week. So fa they like it so much that if the project they're working on is so cool, they might ask you to do a learn guide. Do a learn guide. We might send you parts, and we pay for all those. So yeah, this is how we found a lot of our uh, employees, a mm -hmm. lot of our remote team members. Yeah. We're contest contestants. We're participants of As Seen on Show and Tell. Mm -hmm. Me and Pedro were. 2013 is when we first started showing up. Um, Scott as well, yeah, Sean Croft, right. who is the Kenny, lead of cir the Circuit Pilot. A lot of people, yeah. yeah. Lot of Phil folks. B. Phil B. Mm -hmm. So I definitely always stop by. It's, it's, sort, of it's, like a fun. A, it's sort of like an interview. <laughs> it's a little melting pot to see where all the cool projects and talents there are out there in the world. So definitely stop by and show off your project. Even if it's not finished, we like seeing in progress projects as well as yeah, like retro tech. Notes, retro, retro tech. Mm -hmm. And um, then maker spaces, people showing off yeah, their workshops and fun. what they've done. This is a great tips as well. We've seen some folks come on that had yeah. CNC machine tips and things. Mm -hmm. Just seeing the room it, yeah. layout gives a lot of people inspiration and ideas on how to lay things out or where to put a machine or how to put a light up or something like that. So yeah. definitely show off your spaces as well. And then right after that on Ask an Engineer, eight o'clock p.m. every Wednesday, PT and Lamar, full hour of all of the makings and goings-ons in the uh, maker community and world. A lot of news this week, folks, news so you're going to want to tune in. Lots of uh, conference-type uh, stories going on, and of course, all of the behind-the-scenes and the secret products and uh, projects that are being worked on, so definitely tune in to that. There is a giveaway right at the end. Yes. All the new products that are released. Uh, they liked giving one away. You can call Lamar, Lady Ada herself. Yeah. And uh, I don't ask know what you're three, working on. Yeah, just ask three magical questions. Yeah. You say, um, oh, what's the Heidi Ho? No. <laughs> Heidi Ho. What's the greeting? Ahoy, ahoy. That's it. Yeah. I thought it was. Anyway, um, yeah. You've been watching tonight. 3D Hangouts. Happens every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Time zones change, sorry. Yeah, I know. We, we tried, we voted for this to stop. It's got to get through Congress now. And didn't so. get through Congress. Uh. 
And then tomorrow is, is, is John Park's workshop every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time as well. Um, make code minutes, uh, a lot of Bluetooth stuff going on right now. CircuitPython Arduino, um, and another building. Another it's plug good. for AdaBox, yeah. uh, subscription service. Uh, we'll be shipping soon, so John is gearing up all of the awesome tutorials and the projects that will be included for that, so you don't want to miss out on that. Go ahead and subscribe to that. You can also give it as a gift, so you don't want to miss out on all the new boards that will be included in that. Yep, and that's John Park's workshop. Check it out. Lots of awesomeness, lots of building going on in that workshop. And that's going to do it Yep, for don't us. forget the coupon code is IOFEEDS. We're going to have another one tonight and we'll also have another one john will have his own uh, if you missed out on today you can mm -hmm. always get it tomorrow yeah that's gonna be it for us remember everybody to play us out <laughs> everybody Should make a great day bye see you later tonight folks stay safe folks bye. don't forget to wash your hands